Hi! Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Bonjour. Uh, again, we uh, on last Thursday, we learned how to say hello and goodbye in French and some other words. And on Thursday, we'll recap them, and I hope you're getting a chance to practice them at home. So, bonjour and welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Kids Learning Club. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I hope the weather's really, really, really nice here in my part of Canada. It is very sunny, but still a little bit chilly, which is why I look a little bit extra cozy today. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with Tuesday's Kids Learning Club. Uh, yesterday, we had a funny riddle um, that I think that some of the moms and dads, maybe my age, might know. I remember hearing this one a lot out in the schoolyard. And the riddle went like this. Why is six afraid of seven? Why is six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Did you get that? Because seven, eight, nine, right? So six things, seven is gonna eat him too, because seven, eight, nine. And it's a play on uh, the word eight, okay? Because when we hear eight, we can think that it means the number eight, or it can be the past tense of eat, okay? So that's a fun, tricky one. I had to pause there to think about that. Okay, uh, today's riddle, it's a little bit, uh, long, so I'll read it a couple times, but it's very descriptive, so hopefully you'll be able to get it. I have wings and I have a tail. Across the sky is where I sail. Yet I have no eyes, ears, or mouth, and I bob randomly from north to south. What am I? So that one's cool because it's kind of like a little bit of a poem. Let's hear it again. Try to maybe close your eyes and imagine what this could look like, and it might give you uh, some ideas of what this is. I have wings and a tail. Across the sky is where I sail. I have no eyes, ears, or mouth, and I bob randomly from north to south. What am I? Hmm. That is a fun one, a riddle that's also a poem. <laughs> that's very creative. And actually that leads us into our poem for today. Now, if you remember from last week, last week we started to have a unique theme for each day. We do uh, some activities that are the same at the beginning of our Kids Learning Club video. And then our last activity is, is something specific to the day. On Tuesdays, we do tongue twisters for Tongue Twister Tuesday. And in light of that, I found a poem by Jack Proletsky that kind of uses words that sound the same in the poem and make it feel like a tongue twister, okay? So let me share that fun poem with you. It's very simply called The Cow, okay? And the words that we're playing with is chew, choose and choose. Now, we just talked about eight being a number and eight also being the past tense of eat. Okay, so if you don't hear that word in the sentence, you might not actually know what word the person means to say. Hello to our viewer who just said hi. Hi. Um, and now think for a minute, the word choose. Hmm, what two meanings could that have if I do not put it in a sentence? Okay, I'm gonna actually read the poem first and see if you can hear the different meanings of choose and then we'll read it again and you can try to spot it throughout. So choose. Hmm. The poem is called The Cow by Jack Proletsky. The cow mainly moos as she chooses to moo and she chooses to moo as she chooses. She furthermore chews as she chooses to chew, and she chooses to chew as she muses. If she chooses to moo, she may moo to amuse, or may moo just to moo as she chooses. If she chooses to chew, 
She may moo as she chews, or may moo just to chew as she muses. Did you get any of that? <laughs> it can be really confusing if you're not reading the poem, right? So, um, the two uh, understandings of the word chew is to chew what you're eating, or choose, like she chews, and to choose something, okay? So I'm choosing to do something, or I'm going to choose something for breakfast, okay? And when we're not reading the words on the page and just listening to it, it can be confusing to know. So I'll try to maybe help you visualize. The cow. The cow mainly moves as she chooses to moo, and she chooses to moo as she chooses. She furthermore chews as she chooses to chew, and she chooses to chew as she muses. If she chooses to moo, she may moo to amuse, or may moo just to moo as she chooses. If she chooses to chew, she may moo as she chews, or may chew just to chew as she muses. Oh my goodness, isn't that fun? <laughs> Again, I know it can be a little bit uh, confusing when we're not uh, seeing all of the words, but it's fun to even just listen to it and try to say, uh, say those words. So, actually, in light of that, since we just kind of did a tongue twister and we're all warmed up um, with that, we'll actually just skip down to our tongue twister for the day and then I'll end today's video with our activity uh, challenge, okay? so. Uh, today's tongue twister is another great classic, and I'm keeping them nice and short uh, so that all of our kids, uh, regardless of their age range, can participate, okay? So, today's tongue twister is with the word, with the letter B, okay? All of these words start with B, and it goes like this. I'll say it nice and slow. The big black bug bit the big black bear. Again, the big black bug bit the big black bear. Now, the fun thing about riddles, or sorry, tongue twisters, is that you have to try and say them really, really, really quick, okay? So let's try it together. The big black bug bit the big black bear. The big black bug bit the big black bear. Again, let's speed it up. The big black bug bit the big black bear. A little faster. The big black bug bit the big black bear. Can you keep it up? Are you mixing up the words yet? Let's try one more time. The big black bug bit the big black bear. The big black bug bit the big black bear. Can you say it even faster than mom and dad? The big black bug bit the big black bear. The big black bug bit the big black bear. Oh, that's exhausting. Okay, so there's another look at it. Okay, I can write it out in our comments if you want to uh, challenge someone today at home. All right, that's a fun one. So for today's activity challenge, um, you are going to be doing kind of a science experiment and a craft at the same time. Okay, now we playfully call this a uh, little science experiment turning milk into plastic. Now, we call it that because we're able to uh, turn what we create um, into a substance that once it sort of sets, kind of feels and looks like plastic. But in reality, we're not actually turning, um, turning it into real plastic, okay? So I know that um, some of us might, uh, might be confused about that. So we just say that because it, it looks like it, okay? So what you're going to do is um, basically just use uh, milk and vinegar, okay? And um, we have all the instructions for, for the activity um, that we're going to lay out. And then basically you're just going to uh, squeeze out the liquid, okay, from the milk and, it's, and the vinegar is gonna change what the, the milk looks like. You're gonna squeeze it out a little bit at a time and drain it. And then eventually you're gonna be left with something that uh, looks and feels a little cheesy, a little plasticky, and then you can uh, mold it into something with cookie cutters or even just with your hands. And once these things set, 
Um, and they're actually not like, don't worry, it's not smelly or anything because you're using milk and kind of letting it set. It doesn't get too smelly. Um, you, you actually can have little, little decorations or you can use them for, for a game, maybe like an X's and O game. It's kind of interesting. So it's both a science experiment in a way to kind of see what happens when, uh, with your milk, with these uh, substances, and you can add food coloring and other things to, to make it more beautiful and to turn it into something that you can play with uh, or that you can admire in your home. So in the link that we're gonna share with you, uh, we actually made used cookie cutters to shape them into hearts. And it was at that time um, a Valentine's Day craft for the day that um, Miss Sarah happened to make it with her family. But you can make it into anything, okay? So science experiment craft called turning milk into plastic. Remember, it's not truly plastic, we're just calling it that because of how it feels and how we can mold it. And um, I'll be putting the link to exactly the steps to follow to do that uh, in our comments, okay? Uh, for tomorrow's Kids Learning Club, our theme is Worldly Wednesday. And this is where we get a chance to hear about where our viewers are coming from. And for those that feel comfortable sharing, you can tell us the city that you're living in, uh, the province, the country even, you don't have to be specific to your town. And you can share a fun fact with us about where you live. Um, and I prefer that you choose that fact versus me Googling it, because something that, uh, that you experience as a local may not be something that Google highlights, okay? So if you could share that in the comments, I would love to feature uh, a town, state, or province, or country uh, that you're coming from. Otherwise, you'll be left to whatever I select. And <laughs> I hope that you find it interesting. Okay, so um, I hope you can stump someone in your family with the riddles. Try out your milk into plastic activity challenge. I'd love to see pictures of that. And uh, if you'd like to let us know where you're coming from, we can share that um, tomorrow. Okay, have a wonderful Tuesday, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Au revoir.